Hi everyone, it's Mike Paul Hutter here uh, with TSGUI 1.0 coming out. And I thought it was a good opportunity to do a quick update video on the TSGUI introduction slash first steps video. There's been a number of new features and changes that have come out over the last few months. Um, so I thought I'd just run through those uh, so you knew what to expect uh, when you're starting out. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to mention is if you're using the new ADK uh, 1703, the new creators update ADK. Um, Microsoft has made a couple of changes um, to the WinPE inside of that ADK. Uh, long story short, if you're using it, please add WinPE HTA uh, as a feature to your WinPE as well. Uh, if you want um, some more details on why that is, have a look at the release notes in version.1, and there's an, a link to the Microsoft article and um, what they've done to require that. Uh, as far as the package that you get when you download TSGUI, you'll, you're going to notice there's a few new files and folders compared to what's in the original video. Um, now I'll just quickly run through them so you know which ones are required and which ones aren't. Now the obvious ones, TSGUI.exe and config.xml, those are exactly the same, they're still required. The other things that are definitely required are this new nlog.dll and nlog.config. If you don't have those two files, TSGUI won't launch, um, or TSGUI 1.0 and above won't launch. So they look after some of the, lo the new uh, logging features that are in TSGUI 1.0. So make sure you have those two. Uh, and the other thing will be, so if you've got images inside your config, you're obviously going to need the images folder that contain any of the image files that you're going to be using. Anything beyond that, um, is really about information and examples. So the config underscore examples folder, the config demo, uh, and obviously the release notes, you can kind of just chuck them out as far as your production um, TSGUI package for config manager is concerned. Now the config examples.xml has been shifted into its into a separate folder along with above a bunch of other uh, example config files. Now these um, other files basically run through some of the newer features that have come in since the initial video and, um, and TSGUI version was released. So config underscore examples is still your first port of call uh, for when you're first starting out uh, for copying and pasting your GUI options and then as you get into some of these other features you can delve into the other configs um, and run through a few more of those more detailed config options config demo is a real-world type example of a TSGUI rather than the examples which are specific to that particular feature config underscore demo is kind of all of those features um, together in a config that may get actually deployed um, so just so you can see how the how the config may look in a real-world scenario so that's the new files uh, as far as changes to the config, there's a few minor tweaks here and there that you should probably be aware of. Now they're all backwards compatible, so if you've got one of the old config layouts, it's still going to work. Um, but just moving forward, you may notice a couple of differences. Uh, the first one is that there's now rows as well as columns, so that gives you a bit more flexibility in your uh, layout. So that you can have multiple rows with different co uh, column configurations inside each of those rows. Um, the other thing uh, is that in the older configs there was a difference between a lot of the GUI options as to how you would set the default value uh, for that GUI option when the config was loaded. So there was default value, there was display value, set value, there was a whole bunch of different ones that all effectively did a similar thing. In version 1.0 uh, I've now standardized that to set value. So if you're configuring a value um, onto one of your GUI options, you're pretty much always going to be using the set value element or set value tag. And whether that's a straight up value or you know whether you're using a query, you're now using that set value element. Um, as I said, uh, any of your old legacy um, configs should work just fine. Now the last thing I wanted to mention, um, and this isn't in the, um, 
default config.xml just because if you are watching that original video um, and you you won't be expecting it and you'll be wondering what's going on um, but there's this new option here called live data and this I think is going to be really useful for most of you when you're um, doing your testing on your GUI so if you add this in to your config what this is going to do is when you launch TS GUI, it's going to start this new live data window. And the live data window has a listing of all of the variables. Uh, the ID, which is a new um, feature in uh, TS GUI version 1 uh, called option linking. The IDs are used to identify um, your GUI options, so you can link them together. And the current value that's assigned to that. So you can see in real time what that value is going to get set to. So this is really useful rather than having to wait to the end to click finish and then trying to figure out what the value is going to be. You can actually see it while it's running um, what each value is getting set to. There's also a couple of other things um, for window position and screen dimensions which are useful for um, I guess fault finding and debugging. Especially things around image support um, when it comes to screen scaling. Now if you just use the live data equals true option, that will only run in test mode. When you actually run it from your task sequence, that will disappear and you'll just be left with your production TS GUI window. If you want that window to also show during the running task sequence, you can use this debug attribute here. And you'll set that debug equals true and the live data window will also show up. Um, inside of the running task sequence. So that's about it. That's the high level um, of the important changes. Obviously there's been other new feature updates um, since the original video. For those um, details have a look at all the other how-to videos um, on the 20road.com website. Uh, as usual any issues, questions, queries, feedback uh, please get in touch via the 20road.com website. Thanks very much.